Hello, hello, and welcome. In this video, I'm going to let AI Trend Predictor, which is a machine learning library and a statistical library within a standalone Python software that I use to make predictions on where price is headed on an hourly basis. In this case, I'm going to be running it on ES, the S&P 500 futures, as well as uh, NQ, the NASDAQ 100 futures. So let's begin. I first need to grab the data. I'm going to use Data Grabber, uh, and I am a Ninja Trader right now. Uh, and essentially, I'm going to call the files uh, Friday predictions and data grabber will essentially append the name that I'm looking for, uh, like for ES or for NQ, because what we need to do here is get essentially hourly data. And I'm going to get it from April uh, 1st, which is the Q2 until uh, today, October 3rd. And I'm running this for Friday. So it's going to go back and grab all of the data for Friday on an hourly basis because we want to train the machine learning tool, which is part of uh, AI Trend Predictor, as to what that data was, so it can make a prediction for Friday for both ES and for NQ. It's going to do that separately. So let's go ahead and grab the data first. And it is going to grab it. There it is. It just grabbed it. So now we just have to grab the actual files. There they are. This is what I was referencing earlier. Friday predictions. Friday predictions. One is for ES, one is for NQ. So let's go and train. Um, the machine learning portion of AI trend predictor and all I'm going to do here is copy and paste that in CSV hit enter all right got it utilizing your machines course to concurrently um, analyze the CSV results in the output.txt okay so this is what it's predicting for Friday look at this so it basically gives it for every hour it breaks it down uh, based on the hourly data that we uh, put in there and most of the day up until that in this is Pacific Standard Time so most of it, the exception of the uh, two o'clock hour it is predicting up okay and then it looks like it's reversing right in the right at lunchtime Eastern Time so 9 a.m. and it looks like it's going down that's for the spoos and it might be closing a little bit higher on the close so we got to be careful there but this is of course uh, not something that I am recommending this is just for educational purposes only but it is uh, good to have this information as well, especially if you're using some sort of uh, other confirmation uh, tool as well uh, so that it lines up with whatever it's predicting. What we have on the right side here is a statistical model that is going back every hour and seeing if those results were in fact the case going back until April 1st uh, of this year for Fridays for each hour. So. Uh, the ones that interest me the most are, are ones that have at least 60%, but some people might look at it and say, hey, if it's over 50%, I've got enough of a statistical edge for me to consider that putting on that trade if, a big if, I get that set up. Okay, so whatever software you're using, whatever manual uh, system you're using, once you get that set up, uh, then, you know, if you're using a, a trading system, then the system should be able to take the trade. If you're using manually, you will visually have to confirm a, a price move headed in the direction that you were anticipating it's, it's going to go to. So if we say that you're looking at stuff that's over 55%, okay, uh, I personally like 60%, but to each their own. Uh, here's uh, 2 o'clock it was down, at 3 o'clock it was higher, and then at 6 o'clock it was slight. well, uh, we could ignore that, at 7 o'clock it was slightly higher. So those are the two hours. But if you're looking from an overall perspective, that's the model that's being predicted. And when you go back in time, that's what's really happening. Okay, so, and then conversely, look at that. It looks like waiting until 9 o'clock, again, this is not a recommendation, this is just for educational purposes only, but waiting until after that Eastern time lunch break, okay, so 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, it looks like there are potential better odds, statistically speaking, going back to April 1st on Friday, that 9 and 10 are in fact down over 60%, okay? And then it's sort of reversing itself uh, and catching up uh, towards that close. So um, that's the data for ES. Let's just grab the data for NQ and do the same over here. So we're gonna grab it and train it and it's gonna give us the results instantly, okay? So enter the name of the CSV file. All I have to do is type CSV, enter. Got it, utilizing your machine's uh, cores concurrently to analyze the CSV results and output. It also provides an output.txt file as well, but it prints the results in the terminal directly, so we don't need that. All right, so 
pretty much the same story with the exception of four o'clock for uh, NASDAQ. It looks like both two and four are down where it wasn't the case for ES. So this is also a nice tool to be able to compare the two instruments to. I know most of the time, uh, or almost I should say all of the time, they move in tandem, but it's not always so. So if you pay careful attention, you'll see that it's not always the case, all right? So this is the prediction that it's making. Um, and so the only difference we have is four is down uh, yet for, for NQ, but it's predicting up for ES. So that in and of itself would tell me be careful because I am generally anticipating, again, for educational purposes and not a recommendation that ES and NQ are gonna move in tandem. They're gonna move together, okay? But if there is uh, a prediction where one is moving higher and the other one's moving potentially lower, uh, potentially higher or potentially lower, that makes me think, well, maybe I should sit that one out for those hours and see if I can get something better where things are matching up, like between five, six, seven. That's, uh, this is all, again, Pacific Standard Time. It looks like that might be uh, something that's more interesting, okay? But um, you see that statistically that's not the case. So if you go back historically, and check the five, six, and seven o'clock uh, hours to see in fact they did move up or not. Well, they only did 38.46% uh, of the time, 40.74% of the time. So we're not even breaking 50 here, okay? So that makes me a little, uh, I don't wanna use the word nervous, but it makes me wanna be careful uh, so that I don't just uh, you know look for something that may not be there. But it looks like much like what we saw for ES and Q, is and Q is in fact getting some more consistency happening after that lunch hour with the exception of 10 o'clock so perhaps wait until 11 but uh oh we have some um so again we have uh a a potential conflict here between 12 and 13 so it looks like that 11 o'clock hour so if i were to select just one that 10 o'clock that's not even matching up 11 o'clock 40 11 o'clock 40 so it looks like um, if I were to select one of these hours on the downside, I would probably go with something between 11 and 12, 11, 11, 30, and then perhaps do a hedge on the opposite side. So 11 to 11, 30, look for a potential down setup between 11, 30 and 12 o'clock. Look for a potential up setup just in case they hedge that bet in case I take a loss on the short. Um, and so that is also down 40, but again, it's 44%. And so it looks like if you wait towards the close, that might be a better idea, okay? So it all depends on how you view this, but towards the close, there's opportunity. Um, eight o'clock, eight o'clock, yeah, there's no, up, there's no matching up here. So what I'm feeling the most confident about, if I were to look at this data personally, again, no recommendation, I would look at that closing hour. It looks like it's gonna be bullish going into that closing hour. Um, so that's, um, that's how I would look at based on this data. Again, no recommendation, just based on the data. That's what the machine learning tool is telling us. That's the stuff on the left-hand side and everything from the right-hand side of this, these dashes, that's a totally different library within this Python software of AI trend, trend predictor that is, uh, in, in essence, analyzing the data to see how often it was right. So we have some stuff happening towards the close that may be interesting. Like for example, 64% there, 56% here. So it looks like that from all of these times might be the best potential bet based on the data. But again, I'm not making a recommendation of any kind. You still wanna have a setup uh, before you do that. And so uh, if you have a trading system, that's gonna be easier if you have your own or if you have somebody else's, that's gonna be easier for you to be able to do at least a hedging setup as well. Uh, if you don't have that, then manually be ready to do to sort of hedge your own bet initially. So if you get a short trade, uh, in this case, excuse me, uh, um, a potential long setup, if you enter that trade, it moves against you, then be ready to reverse, okay, so that you can potentially take advantage of it on the flip side, okay? So um, this is something that you might want to consider. So this is just an idea to put out there. Uh, to see what is going to potentially happen on based on the machine learning tool and the statistical model that is testing the prediction that it's making uh, and then uh, taking it from there. So if you have your own tool, you can use your own system to do it. 
you have your own uh, system, you can do that as well. It all depends. Okay. Uh, hope that this has been helpful. Until next time, take care and God bless.